All right, guys, so we're doing supraglottic. So um, basically, on the vortex, you would have tried your face mask, you would have tried your endotracheal, and now your last thing left is your supraglottic. So I want you to line up behind each mannequin and uh, show me uh, how you can ventilate the mannequin with, a, with an LMA classic. Okay, let's just get started with that, please. Now, for those waiting, on the vortex, you'd see here you have a head and neck manipulation. So if you're having trouble ventilating with your LMA Classic, what's a head and neck manipulation that is useful? Any thoughts? Jaw thrust again is going to help you out. Yeah, yeah, that's my favourite would be a jaw thrust. And um, any other head and neck manipulations you can do that might help? Yep, so do a jaw thrust. Yep. Yep, you can try extending the neck a little bit. Yep, that's good. Yep, yep, you could try elevating the head a bit. So all, all, all that kind of things that try to improve intubation position will always help you with a uh, supraglottic airway. Okay? All right. Um, is there any larynx manoeuvre that can be helpful or not? Any larynx manoeuvre that might help you in a manipulation? Yeah, there's not really many with supraglottic, but there's just one just to not forget. And it depends whether you believe in cricoid pressure, but um, if you have cricoid pressure on, and some societies do recommend doing your LMA rescue with cricoid pressure, uh, but if you have it on, then taking it off can sometimes improve your ventilation. It can just help the LMA sit a bit better. And device, so finally device. Any device manipulations that can help your LMA ventilation? Yep, so putting more uh, air in the cuff, yep. Any other common ones that are useful, that you found helpful? Different device. Yep, so change the size. The other common one is that, I mean, the, the biggest thing that happens with putting these things is that they fold over, and often just to slightly withdrawing it. So if it's like that, if you slightly withdraw it and then reinsert it, that can help. So that's just another device manipulation. All right. Do you guys know of any adjuncts that can help put supraglottics in? Any adjuncts that you found useful or heard about? It depends which one you're using. But it you're does? Using, uh, food is going to the esophagus and then yeah. through your, um, got the number, put your LMA over the top of it and then it's yeah. better. You want to demonstrate that? Just here. Yeah. Let's say you're using an LMA Supreme. Yep. Yep. So this is called the Brimacomb technique from <coughs> Professor Joe Brimacomb in Cairns. And the whole idea is, you, is you're putting a bougie just like an orogastric tube, get it in the esophagus, and, and um, passing your supraglottic. So say that's, imagine that's in the esophagus, and then you uh, railroad the gastric channel of your um, second generation supraglottic. And um, what, what that does, you might wonder, well, why on earth would I want to do that, is that it... Um, because the bougie is actually within a channel, it stops the cuff folding back. And it also, um, so yeah, just practice that on that mannequin. And it also ensures the tip of the, of the, of the LMA is within the esophagus. So that's just a, it's a nice little technique. With these later devices, it's probably not that helpful. But with the older devices, like the Pro Seal, it was actually very helpful. So um, certainly a very good technique. All right. Is there another adjunct you can use to help put a supraglottic or an LMA? Anything that you can think of that might be on the table? Well, you can use the laryngoscope. Yeah, you can. I mean, just like, uh, you know, the laryngoscope basically helps you move the tongue away. If the tongue's stopping you getting in your LMA, then certainly that's a good device. So that, that can be helpful. All right. In the situation where you either don't have an LMA, it's failed, it's not the right size, it's not working. Um, there has been an improvised technique described in the literature, which I've used twice, where you can use an endotracheal tube as an improvised supraglottic. So we'll just quickly go through that. And basically the idea is that you've been trying to intubate, can't get it in, just remember, you've got a cuffed airway down there already. So if you just place it, say, um, uh, you know, in the kind of the posterior pharynx and then inflate the cuff, 
that acts as a form of a superglottic airway. There is a problem with that, which you guys need to figure out on the mannequin. But say, say you've put this in, say you're trying to intubate, and then you've decided to leave that in, yeah. and then inflate the cuff and see if you can ventilate the mannequin with that. So you Yeah, that's the problem with this device. But there's also another problem, is that if you just do it like that, you actually won't, well, you, should, you shouldn't be able to ventilate. This mannequin might be a bit kind to you. But, but, but see, there's a big leak. So how do you fix the leak? That's your, that's your, that's your challenge. Because this, this has been done, this has been done. So there is a way you can fix the leak with this. Yeah, something simpler. Something an assistant can do. Or you can do. Yeah, yeah, so you just need to occlude the, the nose and the mouth, and you should be able to ventilate. Yeah. So, so that works well in peds. The, the, the two ones I did was the peds one and an adult one, and they actually work quite well. But the point is, yeah, you, you can, you're going to blow air in the stomach. But then again, when you do mass ventilation, you're going to blow air in the stomach anyway. So. It's, you know, but the times I've done it, I've just been able to re-intubate on the second attempt. So, you know, it's, it's, it's an improvised technique. All right, let's move on to the fast track. Um, so does, do you guys familiar or have you carried this? Yep, yep. Yeah, look, it, it's just a nice device in that you can ventilate. It's obviously a, an LMA but it's also designed to intubate blindly. And um, I, I, I find it quite useful. In my airway audit, this device has saved all our failed intubations over the last eight years, except for one. Right. Okay. Um, and so has anyone put one in? You've, you've done no, this? No, you don't have them? Okay. Well, we'll skip to, actually, we'll come over to this mannequin. It's probably the best. But basically, Putting them in is just like a standard LMA. You open the mouth and you're going to rotate it in like that, okay? It, this mannequin doesn't allow it to sit that nicely, but it will sit nicely by itself there. The biggest problem of doing this when you're doing that technique is this will fold back. So, I was, um, so if you put it in and you can't ventilate, the first thing you need to do is what? Sorry? Yes, yes. So you do the in-out manoeuvre. So slightly uh, out and then reinsert, okay? The next thing, if you're having trouble ventilating, is to do the chandy manoeuvre, which is, if this is, the, if this is the larynx, and this is sitting here, the chandy manoeuvre is grabbing the handle and trying to pull this closer to the larynx, okay? So that's um, trying to do that as you're ventilating, okay? And that'll help not only ventilation, but it'll help you get closer to the larynx to uh, intubate. All right, now eventually, Say you're ventilating okay, you're getting good end tidal, and, um, and you want to intubate. <coughs> There's a couple of tips. First thing is that uh, you should have a well lubricated, and you should actually lubricate the inside as well. That's, that's, that's probably the best thing. Now, this tube comes out at 18 centimetres, so you see here. It starts to come out of the tube at 18 centimetres. So if you're in a position that's wrong, so say like that's your larynx, and you're like that, what will happen is that as you're trying to intubate, you'll hit resistance at about 18, okay? And if you do that, so I'm getting resistance there, what you need to do is slightly manipulate. I generally pull it out a little bit, and then it should pass fairly easily. Yep. Right, well, that's through. And then um, you should intubate. Next question that I had was, once you've got it in, the manufacturer says to do this exchange thing where you take the thing out and stuff like that. Don't do that at all. I, I, I think that's just more stress than you need, all right? So don't do that. But you need to secure it. You need to secure it because this thing will move. And as you're moving the patient, this thing will move. So how do you secure this thing now? You've got this thing in, it's intubated, good end title. How do you secure this thing? Tape? Yep. Any thoughts? So you need to secure this, because that goes in and out, and you need to secure this. So the way we figured out in, in, in our service is we do two ties. So one tie goes around the shaft and the handle to the patient's neck, 
That's the first tie, that's the, the, the main anchoring tie. And then the tube tie goes around, just like a traditional ET, goes around the ET tube, and then it goes around the handle. And the benefit of that is that if, say, the cuff fails on the ET tube, you want to exchange that, you cut one tie and take it out, but this is still secure. Or if, say, the whole thing fails, you just cut the main anchor, deflate everything, and you pull the whole thing out. Okay? We've had a couple of failures in flight on a ventilated patient, and we've needed to take everything out. And often with that technique, it's good because you deflate everything, cut, pull it out, and then you can start your bag valve mask and start to troubleshoot. So that, that's a couple of things, all right? So um, you guys can have a practice with the fast track. Yep.